Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Fork Full of Noodles. I'm your host, Krish Mohan. Hey, you might notice some people laughing in the background of these episodes, and that is because this was filmed in front of a live virtual audience via Zoom. Uh, I do these shows three times a month, record them in front of a live virtual audience, uh, and you can be a part of this live virtual audience by getting tickets to one of these shows uh, where you can go get your tickets at krishmohanhaha.com. They're only $5 for one show, or you can get a multi-show pass and save uh, a few extra bucks. Uh, but if you become a sustaining member of this show, either on Patreon uh, or directly on my website or via PayPal or through Bandcamp, various different ways where you can become a sustaining member, you get free tickets to come to see the Citizen Revolution live virtual stand-up comedy shows, which eventually become episodes of Fork Full of Noodles, which is awesome. Uh, and not only that, uh, but these shows are filmed in the River's Edge studio, which is part of the River's Edge radio network. And I couldn't be thankful for uh, more thankful for being a part uh, of, of the studio. Uh, the River's Edge is your place to get local Pittsburgh music from the Pittsburgh area 24-7. Just go to the TuneIn app, download that app, and look for the River's Edge radio network. It's a 24-hour stream of independent music. The radio station is independently owned uh, and is located in Pittsburgh in the heart of Millvale. So you'll be supporting an independent local radio station. So check them out. Uh, and once again, if you want to get tickets to the shows, if you want to become a patron, if you want to make a donation, uh, if you want to check out past episodes of the show, go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. Thank you very much. And now onwards to the show. If America was a true democracy, then we would be voting for at minimum six judges every eight to 10 years. But we're a corporate oligarchy and henceforth we have a court that runs like a judicial monarchy. The argument that was being made by people who didn't want the Constitution to be ratified was that the Supreme Court, the way that it was configured in the Constitution, it would have enough power that it would be able to strike down laws and therefore it would become more powerful than the executive or the legislative branch and we would cease to be a democratic republic and start being a constitutional monarchy. Right. So that was the argument that was made. And of course they did solidify corporatism into law with the ruling of Citizens United. Now, here's the thing, campaign finance laws uh, were just boring enough that people weren't gonna pay attention to it, uh, and it made it the most attractive thing for the forces of evil to target. And this involves like the most important thing every four years to the American public, voting and elections. And money in politics has been a very long standing issue, right? In fact, corporate personhood was a decision that was only made because the Supreme Court was paid off by the railroad corp companies. And in, in Teddy Roosevelt, when he became president, uh, was the first person to set up an anti-corruption bill in the Tillman Act of 1907. The Tillman Act of 1907 is the first federal legislation that is going to have some type of impact on campaign finance. And what it basically did, what it was ban corporations from giving money directly to candidates. Now, this introduced the idea of political action committees, which really sounded like they were going to take to the streets and fight for your right to vote for that one approved candidate that they approve, and only that one. So only <laughs> one. You can't vote for anybody else, right? This is, I mean, really what it did is uh, it, it was like a corporate crowdfunding campaign for a political candidate. That's really what these PACs ended up becoming, right? And that's really what it's coming down to, folks. That's where our elections are going. We have GoFundMes for politicians. That's what we have here. Now, the Federal Election Campaign Act established the Federal, Action, uh, Federal Election Committee and limited what the political action committees could do. And obviously this pissed off the corporations that really wanted to control these elections. They were real jazzed about it. And the final nail on the head came from the Bipartisan Campaign Reform Act or BCRA, which prevented political ads from being played 60 days before an election. So if you're wondering, 
uh, why they concentrate about 46 political ads into every commercial break of a Jeopardy episode. This is why. This is why they have to do that. They got to they gotta push that propaganda and make up for lost exploitation. And I'm going to do, this is world famous, I'm going to do uh, my impression of this is what every political ad ever looks like, right? It says, America's in trouble. There's crime everywhere all the time. There's a crime being committed in front of your face 125% of the time. And you can't see it because immigrants have stolen your jobs and your eyes. <laughs> it's time we buy back the American vision and save America by making visions in America with this candidate despite the fact that they've never done anything to help you or the working class ever. But they'll do it this time specifically for you. <laughs> yeah. Paid for by the campaign for America's vision made by the flags of America. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking every... Nailed it. Ad ever. <laughs> now, here's the thing. The, the PACs did find a loophole to this. They did find a way around it, right? What they did was they started focusing on a very specific issue in their commercials. So basically repeat everything I just said like 10 seconds ago, but instead of like a candidate's name, you just replace, the, replace that with a word like healthcare or guns or freedom or some shit, right? And <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing, is I really miss my calling it to go into advertising apparently, is <laughs> I'm really good at it. <laughs> that would be my pitch too, it's just like, should we just say freedom or some shit like that? <laughs> Can we, what if we throw a fucking eagle into it, is that good? Can you pay me now? <laughs> <laughs> and look. Here's, these are advertisements, right? So lies are not just allowed, but they're actually required in these ads. It's a requirement that people need to, and that was a Supreme Court decision that not a lot of people are willing to talk about, right? Propaganda v. truth, or propaganda won, sadly. And, you know, that was just, they had better graphics, more celebrities, a lot more bribes. Propaganda, and it was really good. Propaganda was really good in that one. Now, here's the thing. Mitch McConnell and the NRA actually tried to sue Congress over the BCRA, and then they lost, which then led to the NRA News Network being established on Sirius Radio, which is now considered a legitimate news network, you guys. <laughs> the NRA News Network is real, and it makes Fox News sound like Sesame Street. <laughs> <laughs> like a way more ra like a racist Sesame Street, but I think you guys get the point, right? But that's where we are in America, right? In America, a pro-gun corporation is called a news network, while publishers and real journalists like Julian Assange are called hackers and terrorists. With the Citizens United case, a conservative group went after Michael Moore's film Fahrenheit 9-11, claiming that it was a, a political ad and it was coming out too close to the elections. But the group lost the battle since it was like a movie and, and not like a political ad claiming we're all going <laughs> to die all the time unless we vote for this one corrupt candidate from the corporate parties. <laughs> the FEC... Uh, did not decline this group. They they lost it, and uh, uh, that became uh, that began their game of of cat and mouse. So uh, this conservative group decided that they're going to create their own movie company called Citizens United, and they created a documentary called Hillary, the movie, proving once and for all that conservatives have no creativity. They got none. <laughs> right. You could have gone with a, like a way more fun title, right? Like the woman behind the man, you know? Like the BJ that brought down America, right? <laughs> it's a solid one right there. Or even something <laughs> innocuous like the Clinton Files. <laughs> you probably get a copyright right? <laughs> <laughs> for the music, but. <laughs> So Citizens United made this documentary about Hillary Clinton and what they were planning to do is release it via video on demand on Comcast. Yeah, 
that's that's where this movie was, you guys. It didn't even go straight to DVD. It went straight to fucking on demand, <laughs> right? It's it's literally one step above a made-for-TV movie starring Kirk Cameron. For real. <laughs> that's where it's at. <laughs> the only way they, the only way this situation could have been sadder is if they sold it to the fucking Hallmark Channel, <laughs> right? Oh. <laughs> the only way is that too far is that too dark of a joke it's to bring the hallmark channel into it no 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 no, no. <laughs> you're, you're good homie you're good <laughs> but here's the thing they paid comcast a million dollars to put it on their platform right so the fec fought back and their case went all the way to the supreme court who ruled in favor of citizens united Right? The majority ruling uh, and the opinion was written by Justice Kennedy, uh, who, who basically said that free speech shouldn't be limited, even if the speaker is a corporation, and removing all limits on corporate funding. Right? Kind of really fucking doubling down on that corporations are people thing, you know, that, uh, that, that old Morrison Waits put out there. And at first, this ruling went through twice, by the way. Uh, they brought the case back into the courts. They did this twice because the first time they made this ruling, they did it specifically for the ideological group, Citizens United. And then they decided we need to go even further and undo the BCRA. This final, this final decision made money and speech the exact same thing. So the more money you have, the more you can influence election and legislation, and that's deemed as free, the, the freedom of speech and press, right? It's literally the, the put your money where your mouth is decision. That's what this became. This led to something awful. It, it, it led to the creation of super PACs, which are organizations that pretty much have an unlimited cash flow. Uh, especially for electioneering. That's primarily what they do. And once again, this was put into place to protect corporations, right? Super facts allowed companies like Target to back up candidates in secret so that they can continue to turn a profit without putting a target on their back. Huh? Boom. You guys see what I did that one? I did. <laughs> That's fine. Let's just watch the fucking clip. <laughs> because what happened is corporations quickly f discovered the high price of free speech, right? So corporations like Target backed a uh, anti-gay candidate for governor um, and uh, all of a sudden found their stores being picketed across the country because people were furious that they would be supporting such a candidate for governor. So corporations quickly found that it's not cheap to engage in political speech in the marketplace. They didn't want to do it like that. Instead, they wanted to find a way to channel their money into dark money organizations or into what evolved after Citizens United, something called super PACs. So super PACs were created not by the Supreme Court. Super PACs were created by a lower court that said, well, if you can spend unlimited amounts of money, you should be allowed to give unlimited amounts of money to an independent political action committee. That was the super PAC. Supreme Court has never ruled on that question. Yeah. And they have every opportunity to because it was part of the, the lower courts, which means that if, if it's continued to be pushed, and a lot of people have been pushing the, uh, the Supreme Court to overturn their decision on Citizens United, but they have made a decision that they're not going to. Right? And here's the other thing with, with, uh, with these super PACs is that they're not supposed to have any any direct party affiliation uh, with the candidate that they're raising money for, but <laughs> when have rules stopped party elites, you guys? Super PACs are not allowed to coordinate with the candidates. So in a sense, they're supposed to be separated from the candidates. But in many instances on both sides, you have Democrats and Republicans that are in the political party system running these super PACs. So many people point to the obvious conflict of interest they have, that they know the candidates and that they're probably coordinating even though they say they're not coordinating. Now, the founders and the framers of this nation uh, were trying to ensure that this new post-royal government would lack corruption. And in the span of 200 years, the Supreme Court has made this government into one of the most corrupt in the world. Right, the Citizens United ruling is an insult
to every single person that wrote and signed the Constitution. And as much as the Supreme Court has decided on landmark pieces of legislation like Brown versus the Board of Education, Roe v. Wade, an eight-hour workday, it's done way more harm than good. And the good that it's really done primarily came when there was public pressure to take on cases. For the most part, the Supreme Court upheld the rights for corporations and ensured that people are left behind. Well, the court has uh, over over the, I don't know how many years it is, nearly 90 years, I guess, since uh, the, the Wagner Act, the National Labor Relations Act, legalized unions. Uh, there were a few years there when they were on, on the side of unions, but starting in the 50s, really, in a big way, they just started taking apart union power. And they've continued doing that right up to this day. Um, they defend corporations over people regularly. Um, they have always been the very last to defend civil rights on the occasions that they have. And uh, most recently, you know, John Roberts famously gutting the Voting Rights Act, which has led to, you know, massive voter disenfranchisement. Um, the, the list is long, John. It's a long list. The nine justices who sit at the court at this point are way more powerful than the president, the entirety of Congress, and possibly, possibly also Oprah. <laughs> Mate, very good. We have very good evidence to prove that. Do they have a book? Does the Supreme Court have a book club? They, they, there's a, if they don't, then they'll rule on favor of one. And it'll be a, <laughs> my guess it'll be a 5-4 decision, right? Like, Brett Kavanaugh doesn't strike me as a reader. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Unless, like, you put... He likes beer. He likes beer, though. Big fan like of beer. beer. Big fan of fucking calendars. Yeah. So if you, make, if you can get a book in a calendar <laughs> form, boom, he'll read that shit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a beer of the month calendar. <laughs> boom. Oh, yeah. Brett Kavanaugh's favorite solver. thing right there. We got it. Who's got him on his Chris? Who's got him? Brett Kavanaugh as their secret Santa this year. Who's got? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking get that guy <laughs> a beer of the month calendar. Look, speaking of Brett Kavanaugh, there there is fear that the next forty years of decisions made by the uh, courts are going to push back any of the progress that we have made, right? And and that very well may be true because who knows what's going to happen. I, I have no faith in either candidate picking a, a legitimate good person to be on the Supreme Court. But one of the fundamental things that we are, are forgetting here is that the courts gave themselves this much power. That's what they did. And the, and the people just accepted it. So why continue accepting this much power from a branch of government that has failed the people monumentally countless times? It doesn't make any sense. Look, the Constitution itself says that the government that stops representing its people means that the people have the right to overthrow it. It also says that Congress can make laws so that the courts can't review it. That's part of, uh, that's, that's part of uh, Article, Article 2, I believe. Article 3? Article 2 or 3, one of the, whichever one states the Constitution. Sorry, I'm, I'm having a little, little memory lapse in that. But Really, if the, if the Congress had more control and, and could dictate whether the Supreme Court could review certain laws or not, then we would live in a fucking congressional monarchy instead of a judicial one. But if courts and Congress begin to make decisions that we don't agree with, then we the people, as a collective effort, start pushing back to show them who really has the power. And we're already doing it. Look at all the protests that we've seen this year. Look at the labor movement coming back this year with, with over 2,000 strikes. We're already pushing them in the right direction. And that has been your fork full of noodles for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you, you are, you're sharing this out with your friends, with your enemies, whoever you think would enjoy this show. Uh, and, and more importantly, make sure that you are subscribed, whether that you're watching this on YouTube, whether you're watching this on Facebook, listening to the audio version of this show, uh, or on rockfin.com, which is the uh, ad-free 
blockchain cryptocurrency site where the content creators are a part of the company. So uh, there's no censorship, there's no ads, and we're, we're all part of the family. And if you become a subscriber over at Rockfin for $10 a month, you get all of the exclusive premium content, not just for myself, but from all of the creators on Rockfin, people like Graham Elwood, Ron Placone, Kim Iverson, Jimmy Dore, a uh, ton of people that are on Rockfin. So uh, make sure you are subscribed. Uh, and once again, if you want to get tickets to these live virtual events that happen three times a month on Fridays at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. You can also become a sustaining member to get free tickets and additional bonus unreleased stand-up comedy and storytelling content. Uh, you can um, also make a one-time donation. Check out all of my stand-up comedy albums. Uh, keep up to date on wh when my live shows are coming out uh, and sign up for my email list. Once again, the website is krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. -H -H -A. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we will see you next week.